Now let's get some experience doing a different t modeling technique which is called a conditional signal assignment. So let's create the exact same functional model for our proficient EX example, uh, but instead of doing, but we'll do it this time with the conditional signal assignments. And since it's the same exact model, we'll use the exact same test bench. Okay. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is this is a new simulation, so I'm going to come into my folder where I'm working, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this uh, Proficient EX and I'm going to call it uh, this time Conditional Sig Assign. Okay. All right, so it's got its own folder and I'm going to use the same test bench as, as uh, before so I can download it from the website or I can also grab it from the concurrent signal assignment example so I'll just <clears throat> I'll just do that. Okay, so I come in here, and now I've got my test bench, and I'm ready to go. So I fire up Model Sim, and let's see. So I'm going to do File. Let's see here. So I'll do this so you can see it. So File, New, Project, and it asks, where would you like to put this? And I want to put it uh, in my conditional signal assignment directory, and I leave work the same, and I'm going to make it all caps project so I know which file it is. And it creates the file, or excuse me, it creates the <clears throat> project, and it asks me, do you want to add an existing file? And the answer is absolutely, I want to add my test bench. So I'm going to add the, I'm in the conditional signal assignment, I want to add my proficient test bench, say OK, and I want to create a new one, which is going to be proficient EX, and it will be the VHDL and I'm closed. Okay, so I'm up and running <clears throat> and I can double click on my test bench and make sure that it's got VHDL. I can go into my regular file and I'm ready to start modeling. It's blank, so let's begin. So entity, and I'm going to say proficient EX is, and I'm going to do port and X, Y, Z, and I'm, I'm doing this from scratch. I could probably do some copy and paste from prior examples, but I just want more experience typing it in from scratch. So I'm going to give it a mode of in type of bit, semicolon, and then my output is going to be F, and I come over to here and it's mode is out, it's type is bit, I close the parentheses, and I just send, do that, semicolon, and then I do end entity. Then I'm going to do architecture, and I need a unique architecture name, so I do proficient x underscore arc, and that's my name that I'm calling my architecture. I link it to, say, of profi proficient ex <clears throat> is. Okay, so now I'm ready to begin modeling some functionality, so I say begin, and I'm going to go ahead and do end architecture right away so that I can compile and make sure that everything's okay. So I notice I need to save because I got the asterisk, so I go ahead and do that. Come over here, compile selected. And it's successful. Okay, so no typos yet. Uh, I'm I'm guessing that I spelled this right. If I would have misspelled this right, like just consistently throughout this thing, the test bench wouldn't be able to find it, and I wouldn't see that in a compiler. I'd only see that when I actually go to simulate. Okay, so now we're t ready to do a conditional signal assignment. So a conditional signal assignment is a little bit more abstract. Uh, I can actually enter the information almost directly from the true table. So if I go back and look at the true table of this, what I'm going to have is I want to basically say f gets assigned to 0. We're going to be very explicit. We're going to say f gets a 0 when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and z is equal to 0. And then I'll say else f gets a 1 when x is 0, y is 0, and 1, and z is 1. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to list it out, and I can do a lot of copying and paste here, but I want to be very explicit when I first start doing these assignments. So I'm going to say F gets a 0, and then I do keyword when, notice it turned red because it was recognized, and then I'm going to do a parentheses, and I'm going to say X is equal to 0, remember to put the ticks around the 0, then I do a boolean and, and then I give it the condition Y is equal to 0, and Z is equal to <clears throat> zero. So that's my first condition and then I use the keyword else and I can come down to the next line and give it more conditions. So now is when I can start copying and pasting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go copy and paste and this is where I'd say okay now I'm going to get a one when x is zero, y is zero, and z is one. But notice that I, I now have a pretty good uh, line here that I can copy and paste. So let's go ahead and put in the rest of the conditions. Now there's three inputs, so there's going to be four of these. So I'll go ahead and update this right here. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and grab the rest of these and we'll see how this works. So I get rid of that. And I'm going to update these right here. 
And so notice that uh, notice that at this point I should have all the inputs in a binary count. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1. So 0, 1, 0. And then 0, 1, 1. And then I go 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And then that's my last one. So when I'm done, when I've listed all the possible combinations, I just end the conditional signal assignment with a semicolon. Okay, so now what I got to do is I got to go over and, and update the outputs uh, accordingly. So let me look back at the truth table. So I need a 1 on row 1, 4, and 7. Okay, so I'm going to go row 1, and then it's a 0, and then a 0, and then row 4 gets a 1, and then row 7 gets a 1. Okay, okay, so that should be correct. Okay, so that should be the end of it. And let's go ahead and save and see if I have any syntax errors in there. So I'm going to go ahead and compile selected. And it was successful. Let's go ahead and compile our test bench. It was successful. And let's load the simulation. So I'm going to come into my, my library tab, work folder, and I double click on proficient test bench. Proficient example. OK, it flashes. Uh, I have a waveform here. Uh, I'm going to come into my Objects tab, right click, say Add to Wave Signals and Region. They all pop up. I want to run for 80 nanoseconds. I get flat lines right here because I'm zoomed at the end, so let's now see if it works. So I'm going to do Zoom Full. Okay, it looks like it's it's working. Uh, I can't tell exactly by looking at the waveforms like this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hold down Shift, and I'm going to select X and Z, and that selects everything between them. I'm going to say Combine Signals, and I'm going to create a display vector called XYZ. And now I can see those, and I can actually get rid of my individual inputs. And it's like, okay, it looks like row one, row four, and row seven. It looks like it's working. And I can even see it more clear if I change the radix of that three-bit vector to unsigned. And now I've got it. Okay, so I've got the simulation running. And I did it. I did the exact same model for proficient EX using a conditional signal assignment. And notice how this is, I didn't have to do any derivation of the logic expression. So I was able to just take the true table, exactly what I wanted, and actually model it directly in BHDL. And I didn't have to worry about how it was actually implemented or minimized. I'm going to let the CAD tool do that later. Okay, and that's it.